अनम्यूट कर सुन रहा बोल सुन रहा मैं अच्छा
Yeah, it's okay. So can we start the session? Yeah, that's it. Let's start the session. Let's start the session. Let's start the session. I I can't hear you. See, hi. Now can you hear me? Yes, hi. I can hear everybody. You are in a lovely sari, no? Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Hi. Hello. I haven't worn a sari for four months. Okay. Yeah, me neither. I do it only at night. I can't like, hear you. I only do it at night when I do my show. I, for I like, told you for the, the trial not being in one. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Trial. I thought you were main in your survival. <laughs> I, I have this thing of anything I do public, I have to wear a sari. You know, I just yes. can't not. It's just oh, help me psychological. <laughs> yeah. So we can start with the program, ma'am, without wasting your. Sure. sure. Yeah. But it's supposed to be at five? Yeah. Yes. yes. So, Jay Janendra. A very good evening to the seventh webinar of Jito Ladies Wing Ahmedabad chapter. I am Sushma Kankarya. We start with the Naukar Mantra. Jito 
Living Ahmedabad chapter was started before one and a half years with a vision and passion, and we have come a long way. We have done many inspirational, cultural, and knowledge-based programs, and with a holistic approach, it has been a very intellectually stimulating journey. So we are around one three fifty members now in Ahmedabad, and it feels like a big family. Today, I take the opportunity to speak about. the ahar dan app which we have launched in amdavad and with the motto that no one should sleep hungry at least we start in amdavad and then we are planning to take it pan india we have done a lot of food distribution and we have tied up with the robin hood army these are volunteers we have around 1100 plus volunteers in amdavad at present so i wish that this program is taken over all over india in all the ladies wing chapters because um seva is one of the pillar of, on which jito works so um i hope we work as a catalyst and take this project forward and today we have with us shri jigishwai dosh uh, shah who is the chairperson of jito amdabad chapter he is also a founder of jito sports he is a very dynamic young entrepreneur and who is also heading savvy infrastructure in amdabad which is a well known real estate company i would like shri jigishwai shah to speak a few words uh, thank you sushma ji uh, uh miss uh, anuraga ji i welcome you on this platform uh, respected uh, uh, chief guest ganpat ji choudhary and uh, iman shubai and uh, hemant bhai uh, sushma ji Uh, i must congratulate you uh, i think this is your seventh webinar in this lockdown period and it must be highest in india so is uh, lockdown ke time mein bhi aapne time ka itna sahi upyog kiya hai aur itni achhi celebrity itne acche speaker ko aap jito amdabad chapter ke ladies wing and members ke liye aapne invite kiye hai ki i must thank you for that and aaj ke jo special uh, uh, speaker hai i i uh, just gone through her profile she is really very high profile and i am sure we are all going to learn a lot uh, from his speech uh, one more thing i would like to share with everybody jito amdavat when this is a pro, uh, ladies wing program so ma'am i would like to share with you specially ke jito amdavat chapter i think it is the only chapter in india mein 70 chapters hai it is the only chapter jahan pe two board members are ladies member and i am really proud uh, feel proud for that ki amdavad mein ladies wing bahut hi powerful hai and uh, she, uh, they all are doing wonderful so i once again thank you for uh, 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 giving me opportunity to speak in front of you sushma ji i thank you and uh, i wish uh, you go ahead thank you so much jigeesh today we also have with us shri hemant bhai shah who is our gujarat zone chairperson he is a man with great ideas and is on board of some of the most reputed institutes of amdavad he has been with jito since its inception and has led the organization successfully on many fronts most recently we are working together on a project to bring all jain artists to jito platform i would like hemant bhai to please address the audience thank you very much sushma ji jai jinendra on yes. behalf of jito gujarat zone i warmly welcome padma shri anu ji aga madam i must compliment you on the excellent work you are doing at, uh, at tech india tech for india for the education of under privilege it is indeed an honor for us to have you with us today uh, i have heard many of your ink talk and i must say they are really great at this juncture i would like to compliment sushma ji and her team for doing excellent activities at at jito women's wing she is indeed a dynamic personality and has led jito women's wing to new levels in gujarat zone we have five chapters and uh, uh, five five active women's wing chapters in uh, different cities i request all the ladies who are not members of jito ladies uh, wing to immediately join this uh, mission i would like to end with the golden words the hand that rocks the cradle rules the world thank you very much Thank you so much, Himant Bhai. We have amongst us Himanshu Bhai Shah, also promoter of Konark Net Worth Capital, 
a leading financial service provider. In Jito, he heads a program by the name of Shaman Arogyam, which has a corpus of around 150 crores and sees to giving medical assistance to Jain Guru Bhagwans anywhere in India free of cost. Most importantly, he is a person who values relationships above everything and believes in the power of joint family. I would request Himanshu Bhai to please speak a few words. Thank you, Sushma Ji, for your kind words. First of all, I welcome Anuji. और सुषमा जी आपके लिए मैं आपने लॉकडाउन में भी आपने तरीका निकाल दिया कि कब सबको कैसे ज्वाइन रखूं लेडीज को ज्वाइन रखना मतलब इट्स अ टफ टास्क और आप इतने सेवन वेबिनार है आपका तो फर्स्ट कांग्रेचुलेट टू यू देन आई स्पोक अबाउट द शमण आरोग्य शमण आरोग्य एक जीतो का पायस प्रोजेक्ट है और ये ऐसा प्रोजेक्ट है जो आपको वर्ल्ड में कहीं नहीं मिलेगा इसलिए कि हम हमारे गुरु भगवान के प्रति जो हमारा कर्तव्य है वो निभाने का एक अंदर से हमारा एक कर्तव्य जो होता है उसको निभाने का एक प्लेटफॉर्म बना है कि हमारे जितने भी गुरु भगवान आज सोलह हजार गुरु भगवान है तो सोलह हजार गुरु भगवान की स्वास्थ्य की चिंता हम कभी पर्सन टू पर्सन स्वास्थ्य की चिंता करते हैं लेकिन सोलह हजार गुरु भगवान जिन्होंने संसार जिन्होंने पच्चीस साल से हमारे धर्म को बचा के रखा है धर्म मय रखा है अगर ये नहीं होते तो आज हम कहीं ना कहीं भटक जाते तो धर्म की वजह से हम आज ऐसी सिचुएशन में है कि हम कोई अच्छे काम कर पा रहे समाज के लिए काम कर रहे हैं तो ऐसे हमारे गुरु भगवान का काम करने का और मुझे चेयरपर्सन बनने का मौका मिला है ये हम एक्टिविटी क्या करते जस्ट एक मिनट में बताता हूँ आपको ये पूरे इंडिया में पंद्रह हजार हॉस्पिटल से टाइप है हमारा कोई भी गुरु भगवान को कभी भी कोई तकलीफ हो तो उनको तुरंत हमारा एक कार्ड है कार्ड के माध्यम से कैशलेस सुविधा से कोई भी पंद्रह हजार हॉस्पिटल में से कोई भी हॉस्पिटल में एडमिट हो सकते एडमिट होने के बाद पूरी ट्रीटमेंट और हमने ऐसा प्लान किया है वहां पे कि कोई उनकी गोचरी की व्यवस्था हो या और कोई प्रॉब्लम हो उनके पास कोई पर्सन नहीं हो तो पर्सन भी हमारे कार्यकर्ता वहां पहुंच जाते तो अकेले पैसों से सेवा नहीं करते पैसों के अलावा जो हमारा कर्तव्य है हम खुद जाके कि कैसे इनका कोई छोटे मोटे काम हो तो उसमें काम करे इस कोविड के दरमियान भी हमें दो तीन ऐसे केस मिले गुरु भगवान के कि कोविड में कैसे करे तो कोविड में गुरु भगवान के पास आधार कार्ड नहीं होता है फिर भी हमने पूरा कलेक्टर से प्लान करके उनके कोविड के दरमियान उनकी जो रजोरण जो हम होगा बोलते हैं वो भी साथ रख पाए और उसके साथ उनकी गोचरी की व्यवस्था जिस लिए अपना जैन खाना उनको प्रोवाइड कर पाए वो भी प्लान किया विहार के दरमियान उनको कहीं पहुंचना है तो वो भी जीतो समान आरोग्य में किया जीतो समान आरोग्य में डेढ़ करोड़ का फंड है टोटल और उनके इंटरेस्ट से हम ये सब चला रहे हैं और ये प्रोजेक्ट बहुत लंबा चलेगा और इसीलिए हमारे गुरु भगवान को आज स्वास्थ्य की चिंता नहीं है हमारे पास टोटल 108 डोनर हैं जिन्होंने डेढ़ डेढ़ करोड़ रुपया दिया है तो ये प्रोजेक्ट हमारे जीतो विंग का सबसे पायस प्रोजेक्ट है और मेरी लेडीज विंग से प्रार्थना है कि इसमें सबसे ज्यादा काम आप लोगों का होता है क्योंकि साध्वी भगवान को आप ही बात कर सकते उनके पास तो मेरी सुषमा जी आपकी विंग से ये प्रार्थना है कि जितने भी जगह यहाँ पे हो तो आपके लेडीज विंग में इस बार चतुर्मास दरमियान सब गुरु भगवान को मिले उनकी व्यथा जाने कोई प्रॉब्लम हो तो जाने और हमारे तक पहुंचाए तो हम उसमें कुछ आगे प्लान कर पाए थैंक यू वेरी मच सुषमा जी मुझे बुलाने के लिए और आप बहुत अच्छा काम करती है आगे बढ़िए थैंक यू थैंक यू हिमांशु भाई थैंक्स अलॉट नहीं डेफिनेटली आगे साथ में काम करेंगे वी ऑल्सो है इट इज अटर Shri Ganpati Chaudhary he is a very successful industrialist and a man who gracefully wears many hats while he himself works very hard he inspires others also to work to their full potential which is the greatest quality of a very successful leader i would invite shri ganpati chaudhary to please speak a few words very good evening and jai hind nagra uh my voice is clear yes okay uh first of all my heartiest congratulations to chairperson of amdabad jito lady wing sushma ji kakaria for arranging such a good seminar and i am sure uh, the today's i also welcome the today's our guest anu aga ji uh, for this webinar of lady wing of amdabad and i am sure uh, the kind of this experience knowledge and everything what you all we all are going to get uh, uh, listen to her and get very fit in our living how to live a better life and all these thing uh, madam aga ji is a great personality of our country 
and she is a uh, achiever she is a role model of many industrialists like us we always follow uh, we are also our company is a big customers to them also means their company uh, and uh, we have been using their lot of equipment in our all the plant and uh, we are a big time fan of the, their company carbex and uh, we know for sure that today's uh, seminar will be one of the best seminar if i talk about the leading wing of jito apex as all of you are aware that we are spread over the 70 chapters in the 70 cities in all of the india and 11 international chapters and ladies wing is a most important part of the jito we have more than 10000 members of ladies wing associated with jito and in 10000 and in ladies wing amdavad chapter is one of the most prominent chapter because this is the very active chapter every month we have been listening that there is a some activity is going on for the benefit of the members as well as for the community for the seva and for their personal development so keep it up sushma ji and uh, i wish you all the best wishes for the today's also we should not take more time all of us because we are all here and we are eagerly awaiting to listen uh, madam uh, anu ji anu aga ji so thank you very much and wish you all the best wishes jai jindabad thank you so much thank you today we will meet this is anu aga know about her struggles a well defined moment of realization and her distinctive style of working and we have this lakshmi pratori curating this conversation to walk us through this is anu aga's journey so we are looking forward and all geared up for a very scintillating session i would ask ms sita rupani to please introduce our guest Jai Jinendra, I hope um, my voice is clear. Yes. Great. Um, very good evening, and it's a great honor to be sharing the screen with the dignitaries of Jito, as well as the two independent and individual personalities, uh, Miss Lakshmi Pratuti Turi and uh, Miss Anu Aga Ji. We have with us today uh, Lakshmi Ji, who is a CEO CEO of INA Talks. a gold medalist in undergraduate mathematics who has played a pivotal role in field of technology and venture capital lakshmi ji wears many feathers in her hat recipient of numerous award is named as an inspirational icon has uh, been included in forbes magazine list is a curator of stories about multidisciplinary community and is known to have a prowess to reveal the person behind personalities in her interviews lakshmi ji welcome <clears throat> today we are going to witness her in conversation with the renowned business women and a philanthropist and a padma shri awardee mrs anu aga it is said that no one teaches you best than your own life and this is so apt about mrs anu aga ji the one with her great courage and conviction has showed us one of the greatest revival of her company thermex which has set a milestone in indian corporate world anu ji was ranked by forbes among 40 richest indians is also awarded padma shri for her ardent work in social causes as a member of rajya sabha mrs aga has served on many committees of women empowerment and child forum currently is the chairperson of teach for india a paradigm of will and strength anuji is here with us to share her lessons of life that only not only inspires us but also motivates us to face the challenges of life and emerges out as a winner so i guess let's start uh, this conversation that we're looking forward to good evening to both the ladies thank you very much uh, for the welcome so um you know before i start questioning anu first of all thank you for inviting us i you talked about stories so i have to start with a story uh to say ink uh, you know uh, it stands for innovation and knowledge and i want to start with the quote that guides us which is an apt introduction to anu uh the quote that guides us is that life ought not to be measured by the number of breaths we take but by the number of moments that take our breath away you know if that's true we are all rich by the amount of great moments we create for others so we coined a term called billionaires of moments and we really celebrate billionaires of moments because you know in the world we celebrate people by how much money they have in the bank 
in at Inc. We celebrate people by how many great moments they have created for others. So from that point of view, uh, you know, from the time we started in 2010, uh, Inc. Uh, Anu has been a great friend, and it takes somebody special to see the long-term vision of what Inc. is and why is it important for us to create India as a nation of great stories. And uh, the other thing that guides us is that unless the, it's an African quote that says that unless the lions start telling the stories, the stories will always be of the hunter. So forever and ever, Indian stories have been told by archives that are written by British authors and German authors and international authors for no fault of theirs. We haven't taken the time to tell our stories ourselves. So for us at Inc, it is important to tell the stories of amazing people in India through their own words beyond any financial means about the values that they, uh, they can uh, bring to us, we can learn from. With that, uh, you know, a lot of our conversation will be about, uh, I'll be talking to Anu about what makes Anu Anu, you know, uh, and uh, what are some of the things we can all learn from her experience. Uh, you know, my father always used to say, uh, any, uh, you know, uh, an idiot never learns. A smart person learns by making the mistakes themselves. But a truly wise person learns from others' experiences. So I think maybe all uh, gain some wisdom by talking to Anu and learning from everything she has done in her life. So Anu, welcome. Uh, it's always a pleasure uh, to talk to you. And... Uh, First of all, welcome, whatever you want to say in the beginning, I'll have you say, and then I'll start with my first question. Yeah, thanks, uh, Lakshmi, and the association, Sushma, for inviting me. And I want to compliment the association for the wonderful work you are doing, especially your latest project, Nobody Should Go Hungry. May you be very successful, especially at this time, if we can ensure that nobody goes hungry, it would be a wonderful thing. So yeah. all success to you. Great. So, uh, so Anu, I thought we should start uh, way at the beginning about your uh, childhood. Tell us about your school and college. Were you always like one of those type A, uh, you know, like always doing well uh, students? What was your parents' influence on you? Just tell. Tell us about you as a student. Okay. Uh, I was born in Mumbai to a Parsi family, upper middle class. And I had two older brothers. There's a story around my birth, which is tragic comedy, I would say. And I'd like to narrate that. My father was very keen that the firstborn should be a male. And he jokingly told the family, if it's a girl, I'll throw her out of the window. So when the first child was born, the mother-in-law came smiling and said, open the window. He was very disappointed, but he says, that's okay. But <laughs> it so happened, it was a boy. And he was delighted. Second per, uh, child also was a boy. And when, by the time I came, the third child, I was very much welcome. But from this story, I realized my welcome was conditional. If I had been born first, I wouldn't have been wanted. I mean, I'm sure wanted, but not, yeah. not delightfully had. My father was very educated, very well-read man, and still he had this bias. So... It's sad that in India, we are so much looking forward Water. to males. Uh, yeah. Parsis in those days were very westernized. And so my father wanted me to go to a school which was bilingual, Gujarati and English medium. And, but all my cousins and my brothers went to an English medium school. My two brothers were taught to play the violin and I was uh, sent to an Indian dancing class. My <clears throat> Though my school was excellent, I did not appreciate it because of not knowing English well, my self-worth was low. 
I also realized my father was willing to experiment with his daughter, but not with his sons. Today, I have realized that English is needed in India for our professional growth, but our self-esteem should never be linked to our language. We have a hang up from the British states about knowing English well, or else we end up feeling small. Do we feel small if we don't know Chinese? I was a very good student in school and was the head girl. After my SSC, I joined St. Xavier's College and was very active in the Social Service League. And after graduating from St. Xavier's in Economics and Political Science, I joined the Tata Institute of Social Work and specialized in medical and psychiatric social work. I stood first, first class first in both the years. I'm giving you all these details, not to brag about me, but to show you that in spite of my academic achievements, I was never encouraged to be a career woman. And my mother often said, doing well at studies is okay, but your main aim in life is to marry and have children. My two brothers, were constantly reminded that they would have to join the small family business, but not once I was told that I could be part of it. And even though academically I did better than my brothers, I was never encouraged to be a career woman. As per my message, I got married to a wonderful man called Rowington and produced children. So that's my background. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, it's funny. Uh, I think uh, Mira and I have said once also that, you know, a lot of parents expect their sons to do well, but the daughters, he gave you study whatever you want to study. Yeah, right. She said he gave her the freedom to study whatever she wanted to study and become a film director. Otherwise, she would have been forced to be an engineer or a doctor. So sometimes yes. the freedom happen, you know, works the other way also. So... Um, you know, I know you've you've gone through a lot. You know, from not being encouraged to being in career to you have become uh, the chairperson of one of the most successful companies. And under you, it has really turned around. It has done extremely well, etc. So tell us. You know, there are I know from spending time to there are about two three events that really were pivotal in the shift that happened in your life. So. Can you elaborate on that? Can you tell us about those? Yeah, Lakshmi. There were three challenges which really shaped me in a way. Uh, I'd like to talk about them and the lessons I've learned from them. My late husband, Renton, was a brilliant entrepreneur. And under his leadership, our company, Thermax, did extremely well. When he was in his late 40s, he had a massive heart attack and a large part of his heart was damaged. In those days, bypass operation were not carried on. So we went to the UK for the bypass surgery. And on the second day, my husband had a stroke. In spite of his brilliance, in this state, he could not recognize me, forgot his alphabets, and was partially paralyzed on his right side. Dealing with this challenge taught me four very important lessons that has guided my life. Doctors had said that my husband would never fully recover, but with determination and grit, Rointon relearned and wrote A, B, C, D, one, two, three, four, four months. His right hand was partially uh, paralyzed and he asked the physiotherapist in London to teach him how to tie his shoelace. She said that it will take a month and you tie a big bow on your thigh and after a month you'll be able to tie the shoelace. 
the whole night my husband stayed away practiced and the next day he was able to tie the shoelaces it was amazing uh, within 2 years he was back to his normal usual self he took cii delegations abroad and also authored a book this taught me the first lesson never give up and have faith in yourself no matter what the experts say don't give up your power to the experts as parents we give great importance to education and degrees believing nobody can take away our knowledge Rointon had studied in prestigious universities such as Cambridge and Harvard. Rointon's stroke was a humbling experience and taught me that a small blood clot can wipe away all our knowledge and intelligence. So the second important lesson was nothing in life is permanent. Our intelligence and everything we know can be wiped away rointon was a workaholic and smoked and loved food which was not good for him like a magnet he was attracted to the wrong things after his stroke and i made a special effort to cook healthy food and with a sense of humor he would say do it's wonderful do cook it when i'm out of town the third, so the third lesson i learned was not to take your health for granted and look after it from a young age and finally the stroke taught me to change my definition of success my husband came from a middle class background and wanted to prove to himself and make his parents proud by reaching the top of the corporate ladder but the price he paid was very high in my own life i have realized that external recognition in the form of approval rewards awards tickles my ego for a short while but is not at all long long lasting sorry so this is uh so anu we can't hear you can you hear me now we can hear you yeah all along you couldn't hear no, me no no just like in the last 30 oh, seconds okay only last 30 seconds okay we said uh, we heard everything till this is what ta- was taught in my life all the three lessons we heard yeah yeah four 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 yeah <laughs> <laughs> sorry Soon after returning from the uk yeah well wishes suggested that i take interest in our company hence being from the social work background i joined in the hr and worked under a wonderful boss who taught me many things and when he wanted to start uh, being a consultant i was made the head of hr my first born daughter meher had studied chemical engineering at imperial college and had joined thermax as a trainee engineer she married a wonderful boy named feroz who eventually joined our company thermax had acquired a small company in the uk which was not doing well and we sent mayor and feroz to uk to turn it around i had promised my daughter that whenever she had a first child i would come and spend 6 months with her four years later i kept my promise and went to her to help her take care of my grandson rointon was delighted to have me back after 6 months and came to in came to pune about uh, from bombay to pune from pune to bombay to receive me he had a massive attack the same day i was arriving and instead of 
Rointon coming to receive me, I was received by the news that he was no more. Three days after his death, board, the board, Thermax board met and decided that I should take over as the executive chairperson. I was not ready to assume this responsibility. And I was also missing my husband a lot because he was my best friend. And I kept devaluing myself saying, I'm neither an engineer, nor am I good at finance. And how could I run an engineering company forgetting that my father nor my husband were engineers and did a great job of running. But when you're devaluing yourself, you blank out all the facts. I kept comparing myself with my husband and felt very small and inadequate and kept saying to myself, the only reason why I was selected was because the family owns 62% of the shares. So the second challenge was I had a choice to wallow in self-pity and continue feeling helpless or to have faith in myself and give out my best. A year before my husband died, Thermex had gone public. A year after I took over, the Indian economy went through a downturn and our rupees 400 share was quoted at 36. I suggested to my senior male executives to take help from a consultant, but they did not agree. I think men find it difficult to take heart, ask for help. It comes in the way of the macho image. The men in the audience, do you agree with this? <laughs> okay. I um, agree, Anu. <laughs> you agree. <laughs> you agree. Uh, Try driving with a man. They don't want to stop for directions. <laughs> no, no, ask for directions. Convince the board, I convinced the board to hire Boston Consultancy Group and with their help made radical changes. Thermax had diversified into several, several non-core businesses which added to our top line but eroded our bottom line. For example, we were the first in India to start, start software, software business way before Infosys or Wipro, but we didn't know how to run it. <clears throat> so the businesses where we decided, we divested from many, many core, non-core businesses, which meant asking people to leave, which was one of the most painful things to do because my husband and I, felt that in a country like India, where there's no social net, we could carry a few non-performers. The businesses where we decided to stay, we brought in operational efficiency. We reconstituted the entire board. I think this was done for the first time in India. And again, a very difficult thing to do. Imagine people who had our executives who were on the board and had served us for many years to ask them to resign. But to their credit, they all did it very graciously and stayed on with the company. We professionalized the uh, operations and Mayor and Firoz were given a difficult choice. They had to either be in charge of businesses, which they were doing and were part of the board now they had a choice of doing one or the other. They were a little upset with me. They couldn't understand why suddenly I asked them to make this choice. But today they value this decision very much. With great support from my family, senior executives, we turned around in 2002. Destiny, I also believe destiny was on our side and without which, However much we tried, we may not have succeeded. Giving some credit to destiny brings your ego down. I've done that, we've done that. It was not destined, we would not have. I also decided to become a non-executive chairperson. 
and at the age of 61, retired as the chairperson. The board selected my daughter, Mayor, who is far more suited for this position. As I said earlier, she's a chemical engineering, is very good with finance, has imbibed the family values, and is doing a great job and leading Thermax very successfully. My son, Purush, after completing his engineering abroad, worked with us. And thank God he was with me when my husband died, because Mayor and Firoz were in England. <clears throat> when Thermax was not doing well, he drove with a service engineer to Bangalore to retrieve an order which we had lost because we were not doing well. He was very anxious not to let a single order slip. But while coming back with winning this order, he met with an accident and he died. The pain I felt when my son died, sorry, when my husband died, receded into insignificance compared to how I felt when my 25-year-old son with his full life ahead of him passed away. Again, I had a choice. As I underwent my third challenge, to, death, to face death and come to terms with it or blame God for my son's death and turn bitter. Earlier, let me tell you how paranoid and scared I was about death. Whenever the word death was mentioned, I would touch wood, hoping it would not ever enter my life and not take away anyone I love. I was so stupid and paranoid that in the olden days when we were traveling by car and the word death was mentioned, I would ask Rointon to stop the car, find a tree and go and touch it. But today I know that if I carry the entire forest with me, I cannot change my destiny. I had heard about Vipassana for many years. I was in some ways attracted to it, but wondered if I could keep quiet for 10 days. And my husband would jokingly see, say, I would love to see you quiet for 10 days. Since you cannot distract yourself, you have to turn inwards and find your answers and strengths from within. I understood that whether you are a queen of England or a beggar, death will knock on your door. Everyone attending this webinar will die. It is inevitable. The only thing that we do not know is where and how it will happen. It is unpredictable. And yet all of us refer to death as a tragedy. To me, death, which is inevitable, is not a tragedy. But not getting along with the living is a tragedy. It is a tragedy not to invest in yourself and say that at my age, I cannot change. I also realized at Vipassana that an apple tree cannot give oranges, which means if I keep comparing myself with my husband, I can never be rointed. But I have my unique qualities. Can I build on those and give those out rather than hankering after what I'm not? I came back from Vipassana very positive and full of energy. I meditate daily. Uh, for one hour and have attended four meditation programs. So these are the three challenges and the lessons learned. Um, you know, I know I must say the last thing you said in terms of it's not the death, but not getting along with the living. 
uh, maybe even one more step of not caring for the living you know that is the ultimate tragedy i think the day we say you know just me and nothing else i think that will be the biggest uh, tragedy you know i really want to thank you for uh, sharing this yeah, and i think i have found yeah. lakshmi yeah that if someone close to you dies right and you had a good relationship yeah it's re- of course you'll go through a lot of pain yeah but it's easier to get over it but right if you're full of guilt and yeah. keep saying i wish i had said this i wish yeah. i had done this yeah yeah haunts you right right you know i have to tell you one thing you know before my dad passed away he told this to me he said that after i go i know you will say that oh i should have bought that book dad always wanted i should have done this i should have done this i just want you to know you have done everything i ever expected of you and more and i don't want you to ever think that anything is left for you and it was so important he said it because sure enough when i heard i was in us when i heard he was not well my first thing was my god my dad asked me to order this book that was out of out of print and i didn't get it you know that was the first thing that came to my head but you are absolutely right i think if we can live to absolutely you know and complete. you know any meaningful relationship has bitter sweet yeah. memories yeah and we right. pick up the bitter ones and right. all the sad ones rather than taking the whole thing in perspective correct knowing your loving nature i'm sure you must have been an excellent daughter yeah yeah well t- troublesome and excellent both at the same time <laughs> interesting that's makes an interesting yeah one. that's what my dad used to say like there's never there's never boring moment in the exactly. in the exactly exactly you know one thing i do want to talk about thermax uh, you know i know i mean i recently had an opportunity to interview your ceo and he said that you know thermax after being around for more than 30 years had the highest growth in the company after you brought bcg and made all those changes you know when they really tried to do away with all the divisions that are not relevant and focus and you were the first company to bring sustainability in its true form to india you know and uh, bring it on and that was such an eye opener for me that it's it's never too late for a company to turn around you know uh, and uh, he was very eloquent in how he talked about, and there was so much passion it was his company as much as it is yours you know i mean oh, there, it but, is <laughs> yeah so i want to talk a little bit about that because i think it's important for everybody who is in the business world to say how do you build that professionalization of the company especially when you are the owner and truly walk away i mean today you do not get involved in day to day operations and uh, you know how is the, i mean what is the process through which you have done it and how you chose the people etc tell a little bit about the professionalizing and especially when you are a family business to sure. professionalize it and truly walk away sure uh, i think uh... a lot of credit for recruitment goes to my father and my husband who didn't necessarily go after i am we may take a few but they saw who that person was his values yeah and that's how and we have so had unfortunately the culture changes people who proudly said this is my first and my last job yeah they stayed with us for years you know yeah yeah so yeah. that was one thing my as i said earlier my father and my husband were both not engineers and how did they run an engineering company and my husband said it was an entrepreneurial company not entrepreneurial right. that people don't own shares but they own the company psychologically right and he gave them full uh, freedom to come up with ideas and run with them uh, one of our employees ramni senior person thought of absorption chillers went to japan brought the technology and made it a success our yeah. hr person thought of software it didn't succeed some will succeed some will not but right. there was a lot of freedom given and mistakes were tolerated right. that's how it grew yeah yeah uh, uh, you know my husband though was a family person he deserved to be the head he was the best 
even if I say so. Yeah. So in a way, it was a family business, but in a way, the, uh, he was a professional also. Yeah. When I took over and I felt that I'm not the right person to make decisions, I could give some wisdom, some values, but I cannot give technology or my husband knew technology so well. My son-in-law is not an engineer, but he knows technology better than a lot of engineers. But I'm not interested. So I never picked it up, you know. Finance, I still count like that. I hate it. So <laughs> I'm not just made. So I said, in our own interest, yeah. we want Thermax to succeed. It's our legacy. We want it to go on. So let it be run by people who are maybe family, may not be family, but who are best at running it. Right. So that decision was a wise decision. Mm -hmm. And we also believe that when it's time to retire, you must let go. Unni has been an outstanding MD for us. Yeah. But our age for retirement is for 60. And though it was difficult to let him go, we cannot depend on one person right. and must let the company be handled by different people. Right. So yeah. I retired at 61. I took one more year than the usual age. And at 75, when I retired from the board, because for the independent directors, the retiring age is 75. And though most family members continue till the 85, 90, especially right. men, mm -hmm. and all around them are wondering, ye Buddha kabhi jayenga? <laughs> but they can hold on to the position. Yeah. I didn't want to undignify myself. Yeah. And I must remember that no individual is bigger or more important than an institution. Yeah. And so, uh, and I have failed if I has, haven't found a successor. Yeah. It's my biggest failure. Yeah. So every leader must find a successor, move out when it's required, and find something else to do. You can't hold on to your position and power for the rest of your life. Yeah. I have also, by the way, retired from Teach for India as the chair. I was going to no longer the chairperson. Yeah, yeah. I wanted to come to that and say, you know, you did find something else. You know, after you left Thermax, you really went back to. I think maybe this was your first love, philanthropy, and uh, you know, you studied at Tata Institute of Social Sciences, etc. So. Uh, maybe it was always there, but you really focused on uh, philanthropy. You've signed the, uh, you know, uh, Gates, Buffett, you know, the whole, uh, you know, uh, giving pledge and all that stuff. And you really take this giving very, very seriously. You know, it to you, it is as much a rigor as it is uh, a business was. So tell us a little bit about your, your change into philanthropy, you know, move into philanthropy and especially you chose to focus on primary education, uh, you know, change at primary education. So tell us a little bit about that shift and how, did, because there are so many things you can work on in India, you know? So why did you pick what you picked? Actually, just one correction. I haven't signed the, the giveaway pledge. Okay, I fine. Haven't, I haven't. Okay, okay. Uh, just a little clarification. Sure. Uh, let fine. me tell you how I define philanthropy. Most people define philanthropy with money, giving money. Correct. But to me, writing out a check is relatively very easy. Correct. To me, philanthropy means giving your time, your skill, your knowledge, your, your say, part of your body. If you give one kidney to a person who needs it, what better philanthropy? And of course, your resources and your money. Right. <clears throat> you know, before we our company went public, Whatever little savings we had, we kept plowing back into the company, and that's how we grew. So, but I was always interested in some form of social work. I was connected to Mother Teresa's home. I did voluntary work. There was a boy called Khaja Babu in Bombay who was living in an orphan home. And we used to invite him. I paid for his stay there invite him for all his holidays to our house. 
But my son, Kurush, was very bothered by poverty around him. Mm -hmm. I wonder we who live in India become a little insensitive because yeah. we see so much around it. Right. And Kurush kept pushing me that, mom, you are a social worker. Your needs are not very much. Why don't we give a large part of what we earn to social causes? And soon after that, my son met with the accident and he died. And his wish was bothering me that I must do something about it. And I inquired, who is a credible person doing great work? Mm -hmm. And everyone said, go to Bombay and meet Shaheen Mistry, yeah. who had started Akanksha and later started Teach for India. Yeah. So Shaheen remembers that I came with a long questions and we met. <laughs> we became, we took to each other yeah. and Shaheen's passion for education rubbed on me. Yeah. And later it rubbed on my daughter, Meher. And yeah. so we decided to spend most of our money uh, to philanthropy for educate, primary education for the underprivileged. Mm -hmm. uh, right now, we give 30% of the dividend that we get from Thermax for philanthropy. Okay. We hope to raise it to 50 over time. Right, yeah. Okay. Yeah, and also it's not just, I mean, for you, it's not just, I mean, the CSR funds, everything is like a check mark, you got to do it. But at, at Thermax and for you guys, it's part of the philosophy of the company of, uh, of giving away. So we tell started me. CSR, the yes. SPO Foundation, way before it was made compulsory. Correct, correct, so, yeah. yeah. Uh, in fact, I don't like it when it's made compulsory, but correct, anyway, right. now it's done, we have to do it. <laughs> so, you know, before we open it up for everyone, I just want to say, what have you seen, in what way have you seen the impact of your work? Uh, and how, do, because philanthropy, especially something like primary education, they are vast. It's not like in a year you're going to see the results, nor should you expect, uh, expect it. But still, you need to see little shifts. So do you want to share with us what are some things you have seen that really encourage you to continue doing oh, this? Uh, yeah. Through Akanksha and Teach for India, we have seen the change in the lives of our students. Yeah. Both these NGOs have been able to send about 11 students to United World College. Yeah. And that means their college education is also taken care of. Yeah. It's not just, but the way they want to give back these yeah. students. They don't want to live there and have a good life. Mm -hmm. They are passionate about giving back. Mm -hmm. We had a girl from Akansha. Seema, her name is, uh -huh. and she made it to TFI, Teach for India, which right. takes about 7% by way of recruitment. Uh -huh. And she passed from TFI, then again joined Akansha, became the principal of a school in Akansha. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, so yeah. when we see the lives, the value, not just the academic, the values, the, during yeah. COVID, we are not a relief organization, but our fellows and our teachers from Akansha mobilized themselves, collected funds. We had to create a separate thing because we can't do it from our funds and reached out to our communities and other people with food, with anything that was needed. So every time I hear about these stories, I think yeah. it's worth every bit, worth yeah. every bit. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and I think that's the purpose of philanthropy is that little bit of change, you know, and then each of those change agents make a huge change that you can't do yourself. So you know, this is not little bit of change. It's a lot of change. Lot of changes, uh, yeah. Their generosity, their reaching right. out is far more than mine. Correct. Compared Correct. to what they have. Yeah. Oh, it's unbelievable what they do. Yeah. One day, Shaheen got a desperate call from uh -huh. one of our students uh -huh. that her neighbor has died of hunger. Do something. You know, she was so concerned. It woke all us up. 
that right. things are really bad. Earlier, we didn't know how bad things were. Mm. So then it's just wonderful. Right, right. So, Sushma, I want to open it up. I know you wanted to ask some questions, and I want to open it up to you and the uh, members. It was a very, very hard comment session, ma'am. Heard, I had uh, read a lot about it on Google also, but today came. I can't hear you. Can't hear you. Um, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. So, I had heard a lot about you, ma'am. But today, whatever I heard directly from you, it was very heartwarming, ma'am. So I just had this one question. You were always a Fulbright scholar student. That is what I know about you, of what I read. And still, I just wanted to know what is the importance of having a mentor in life? And did you have any mentor? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I have a little different view I don't think I want a mentor, one or two mentors in my life. You know, if you are an apprentice to learn a particular skill, you may need a master, a mentor. But otherwise, if you want to learn about life, don't restrict it to one mentor. And uh, I feel it has helped me in my personal and professional life. I also feel that in a mentor-mentee relationship, there is a hierarchy, which means that the mentor cannot learn from the mentee, which is not true. Everybody can teach. Years ago, I read a fascinating book called Even a Stone Can Teach. So if you are in a mood to learn, a stone can teach you. And if you are not, God will also not be able to teach you. <clears throat> I think the, the best ongoing learning is from our own experience and our inner resource. So I don't believe in mentors, but I have learned from people. Of course I have. My husband taught me many lessons. My daughter, Meher, continues, has taught me and continues to teach me. I have learned from many friends. And of course, my role model is Gandhiji from your state. So in the way of life, I think you can come across many people from whom you can learn and keep learning that way. Very yes. true, ma'am. Yes. So just looking at you and admiring you, I just had this one thing which comes up. So what is the secret behind you aging so gracefully, ma'am? It's a little embarrassing, but I'll try and attend. It is not, but people <laughs> might be on screen okay. today. They might really be admiring you and your thoughts, definitely. I think I have accepted the aging process. My white hair, a little paunch. So, I don't fight against these things, you know, and try and fight them. Having said that, I have also taken very good care of myself. I eat wisely. At times I do overeat, but I also spend an hour exercising. I go for a walk. I meditate for an hour. So I invest in myself. I emotionally and psychologically always challenge myself and I never say that now that I'm growing old I cannot change and please accept me as I am. To me that's the end of your life. Right. Now Sushma my secret is out so all of you can gracefully get old and surpass me 10,000 times. Okay. I have to, Sushma, I have to say, I have to say one thing that uh, one thing about Anu is even today, she does everything herself, you know, like when I go to her house, she takes the food out, she warms it up, she picks me up, we go for a walk together. She's not someone who's got 10 people running around doing things and really relies on herself a lot. And, you know, I know Gandhi is a role model, but she lives a very, very simple life where everything is done by herself. And I think part of success, secret to success is 
being self-reliant. And I think, uh, I mean, I enjoy that whenever I visit you, Anu, is that there is 10 people are not running around. We just walk in the kitchen, get what's there, eat, clean. It's very, very self-sufficient uh, model. So, but Lakshmi, there have been a few changes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I do have help, but they go away by 4.30. Correct, but yeah. My, to please my daughter, who's been begging me all my time as a widow to have someone, I've agreed to look for someone. So next time, yeah. will, <laughs> if you like, I'll send her away, but we will hopefully have someone. And you said <laughs> I even come for a walk with you. Yeah. You expect me to send someone else to? <laughs> no, 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 not at all. I mean, you drive yourself, you come and pick me up in the car yourself, you drive yourself. I still I, have not. I love joking. So. Yeah, I have yet not dared to drive in India. I, I will not. That's one thing I have not dared. But Anu is very brave. You know? so, so I do it only in the evenings when the driver goes away and on Sundays <laughs> and short distance because my son in law says you may not want to give up. But for the sake of the people walking on the road, please give up. You are a horrible driver. Okay. Go ahead, Sushma. It, it's yeah. Yeah. So yeah. there are some questions from the uh, participants also. So this is Kavita Jain who's asking, looking at the present day scenario, how should one build resilience to face untoward circumstances in the present or the future? Okay. Uh, first, let me give you my experience. When the COVID fear and all this started, even in my meditation, I was thinking about death of myself and my dear ones, and I was anxious. But when I started reading and seeing, reading stories about the migrant workers, I felt we were so blessed and thankful to God. And when your interest is outside your own concern, you definitely uh, feel better. If you're always thinking about me, my family, then you're inward thinking and you're anxious. But when you know the reality, what suffering is going on outside and try and do your little bit towards mitigating that, it definitely frees you. Life is never going to be smooth and a straight line, and it will have ups and downs. And you have to learn through some form. For me, it's meditation. For you, it may be something else. Yeah. You How to stay equanimous and not go through the ro roller coaster ride. And realize that can you stay calm when there's turmoil outside? My father used to say, he used to work for Godrej, that the Godrej safe when there's fire is cool and calm from inside. So we have to learn this, that when there's chaos around, how can we remain calm? That's very important. I find a sense of humor very important. Yes. To, uh, and that, I don't mean being able to laugh at someone's joke able to laugh at oneself and not take yourself very seriously because I read three lines which are beautiful. Our stay on this earth is short, yeah. our roles dispensable and our impact inconsequential. Yeah. So if you don't take yourself too seriously, nothing around you is too serious. Yeah. Very true, very true, ma'am. So, uh, like what you said, ma'am, you are into vipassana, meditation, all these things. So, these things definitely have a lot of importance in your life. But I would just like to know that uh, what do you have to say to our members or the ladies who are around? So, does this really work? Uh, like, should they also be practicing this thing? Meditation means a lot, actually. So, Sushma, I can't be prescriptive about other people. Yes. Uh, some people have found it very beneficial to be with Ravi Ravi Shankar or yes. with uh, Guru, what is this, uh, Sadhguru. Huh. It could be anything that helps you, you know. 
but uh, it could be just sitting and doing your prayers very diligently. It could be anything. So I'm not going to be prescriptive. Unfortunately, human beings don't do something very seriously and invest in themselves unless they're pushed towards it. We are quite happy leading a lovely social butterfly life, going to parties, doing wearing designer clothes, showing off our wealth. But when something hits us, then we start reflecting, which is, but I must say my daughter on her own decided to go for it. And she didn't even find it difficult. I found it difficult. But she doesn't practice every day. So each one has a different model. So yeah. that you have to find your own. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Very true. Yes. Yeah. So ma'am, just on a casual note, I would like to ask that if you would be anywhere in the world right now, where would you be and why? So definitely Pune is the place, but if somewhere else. Right now, where I am talking to you with my daughter sitting next to me, I wouldn't want anything different. <laughs> See, one of the things of making you unhappy is not enjoying the here and now and going into the past and feeling bad about some things you didn't do or going into the future and say, I wish I could do this, I could do that. Stay right. here and now and enjoy. Right. I'm enjoying talking to all of you. You're giving me a lot of wow. So it's nice for my ego. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, ma'am. And one more thing, like what you said, that um, we have our elders, we always have this regrets, but we never express ourselves. In Indian culture, it is there that we never express our love to people. So uh, like uh, even in our family, we would never have said our parents that we really love you. So what do you say about this? Like, is it, what's the importance of expressing yourself? Expression can take many forms. You don't have to say, I love you, but do the things that make them happy and they know you love you back. Yes. So that's one thing. It is the Western thing to have a Mother's Day, a Father's Day, a Grandfather's Day, send cards and then forget them throughout the year, except that one day. So, but I think if for you, if it's important to tell them I love you, then go ahead and cut them. More than anything, physical contact is such a potent way to show someone you care. Yeah. 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 That go and hug them. Whisper, you don't have to say in front of, whisper in the ear, whatever, yeah. huh? yeah. I love you, you know. Say, uh, push yourself to do something and you'll be surprised she or he will also enjoy it. Nobody yeah. doesn't like being loved and being told they like you. Yeah. Right. And I think, you know, I just want to say one thing about this. I think your children or your parents, they may not hear what you say but they always see what you do you know so what you do always get and this is one thing my friend told me when I had my son is that you I don't care whether you tell your son I love you 10 days or not but he'll always watch what you do you know so don't tell him one thing and do another thing so I think just being there is the best gift we can give to people okay. um I do also want to say at the end, I can't not say a story. You asked about a mentor. So I have to tell this uh, story that uh, in year 2000, when I went to one of my friends, I wanted him to be my mentor. Like all my life, I, was, I wanted a mentor, somebody who you just looks at you and says, I know your potential. Let me tell you what to do. So to be a mentor was somebody who is like a film director who, dis who discovers you, you know. So I met this uh, person. He still is my best friend. And I asked him, will you be my, be my mentor? And he said, and he told me this story. And uh, he said, you know, uh, so this is a story of a little child who goes to a zoo. And he sees a huge elephant there, you know, with a little, with a small fence and a small pole and a thin rope that's tying the elephant. And the elephant is extremely unhappy. And the child asks the zookeeper, why is the elephant so unhappy? And the zookeeper says, see the forest out there, the elephant really wants to be there. It doesn't want to be in the zoo. That's why it's so unhappy. Now the child is really perplexed. He says, but the 
fence is so low, the rope is so thin, all the elephant has to do is move its head and it'll be out in the forest in like five minutes. Why isn't the elephant doing it? And the zookeeper says, when we first brought the elephant, it was very small. The rope was very thick and the fence was very high. It tried for one day, two days, three days, four days, 10 days. And it just resigned to itself that it can't get out. The elephant doesn't see how huge it has become, how powerful it has become. And that's why it can't understand that it has all the freedom. And, you know, for all of us who are looking for mentors, we don't even see the power we have within ourselves. It's like what Anu was saying that she felt my husband can do it, my dad can do it, but I can't do it. I mean, we are the biggest people who stop ourselves. You know, it's not anybody else out there. And especially in Asia, I find that men, women, we all put ourselves down a little bit. And especially women, you know, we are always saying, no, 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 but that's not me. But, you know, Smita was really great. Anu was really great. I didn't really do it. My team, we don't know how to stand in our power. It, power is not the right word, in our strength and say thank you. We just don't know how to say thank you when somebody gives us a compliment. So that was such a life-changing story for me when he said that you don't need a mentor. You, each one of us can be there for someone else. So you don't need anybody else to mentor you. So I think, I mean, to me, I feel that about India, you know, we are always looking to somebody else to come and give us wisdom. And they're all coming, taking our wisdom and making billion dollar industries out there, you know. Right. So I feel at every level, the, you know, we are so much stronger than we even know. But it shouldn't be coupled with ego. You shouldn't now say, I can go anywhere, do anything, kill anybody. You know, it's not like that. But to uh, you know, that story about a mentor really, really stayed with me. And actually now at Inc, we started doing, it's not mentor circles. We started doing coaching circles where everybody mentors each other. It's not about me asking someone to tell me what to do, but it's a circle where everybody coaches each other. So I think this is a very powerful concept for mentor to say we can be mentors to each other and uh, not look for that one person who will, who will yeah. die. Because everybody, everybody has some or the other strengths. Yeah, absolutely. My 16-year-old is the one who taught me everything. You know, I do Insta Live every evening. I didn't even know it from Adam, you know. So he sits with me. He taught me. And yes. he taught me how to add, how to do this. And I'm like completely clueless, you know. Right. So he's <laughs> teaching me. So, uh, so it's whatever. So I just had to say, wanted to say that at the end to say really... Uh, thank you for inviting us and uh, having this conversation. And it's always a delight uh, to chat with Anu. She's uh, even during the lockdown, she's so busy all day long. She's listening to webinars, this, that, to get a slice of her time still is tough. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. Uh, can you hear me, Anu? No, no. Yeah, okay. No, I was just saying, even during lockdown, you're so busy. You're like gotcha. on webinars, you're listening to things, etc. So it's a delight to chat with you, uh, have the opportunity to chat with you. So, uh, Thank so, you. Okay. Yes. And energy. I, hope, I yeah. hope all the audience, like many of them, might be inspired, ma'am. So I would just uh, like to thank you for sharing some time with us at this GTO platform. Thank you, Anuji. Thank you, Lakshmi ji. Sure. I would like Anuja to give a vote of thanks. And thanks a lot for being with us. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Anuaga, for giving us these wonderful insights. It was a great pleasure to have you amongst us and learn a few but very important lessons of life. I'm sure if we even follow a few of them, life will not only be beautiful, but a very happy place to live. I would like to thank Mr. Ganpatji Chaudhary, our guest of honor, Mr. Himanshu J. Shah, our honorable chief guest, and Mr. Heman Shah, our special guest, and also Sushma Kankarya Jain, our Jito Ladies Wing chairperson, for making this webinar possible. Jai Hind, Jai Jinindra. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you.